Welcome back investors, Jake here. In this video, let's do an update on my Schwab portfolio because three of my positions reported their fourth quarter earnings, General Dynamics, Texas Instruments, and Capital One. And as of right now, the markets are up. The Dow Jones is up 0.98, the S&P up 1.45. I don't know if we've bottomed out or if this is a dead cat bounce and the market will go lower this week. My suspicion is, according to the technical indicators, is that we've reached the local low and the S&P is going to recover nicely over the next couple days. You can see from my accounts that year to date, I'm still down about eight grand, but hopefully I bottomed out Friday, Monday, and as long as this stays green the next couple days, I should be doing fine. Now, when I took all these positions uh, back in November, I basically bought at the peak of the market, and I'm pretty uh, satisfied how my portfolio has done over the last two months. However, these three companies that I mentioned, Texas Instruments, General Dynamics, Capital One, I got into them because I didn't think they were grossly overvalued. However, there are lots of great profitable large cap stocks that I'm now interested in that have gone down 20, 30, or 40%. Companies like NVIDIA, Adobe, Netflix, PayPal, Oracle, Nike, Intuit, Starbucks, Disney, Target. So now that so many other great companies have pulled back to decent valuations, I am looking to rotate out of Texas Instruments, General Dynamics, and Capital One and get into some of those other companies. I'll make those videos once I make the change. But as far as the broader market, if you guys once again were worried about this sell-off in the S&P, never mind SPACs, IPOs, or those high-growth stocks that don't have earnings, companies that have earnings, companies that are doing stock buybacks, companies that are increasing their dividends, those companies are fine. Don't worry about those. But when we look at the broader market sell-off, if you were just following a technical indicator, some people use RSI, MACD, I personally use stochastics, but they're all basically showing you the same thing of when potentially momentum in the market will switch. When the market is oversold and the shorts have to cover, uh, people waiting for the sellers to exhaust themselves, the bulls, and I think that's what happened. I think there was a lot of selling this last month. The technical indicators kept showing selling could continue, uh, prices could go lower. And ultimately, I'm not worried about the stock market right now, guys, because people have money. The money supply is still expanding. The Fed hasn't raised rates yet. So the money supply really hasn't contracted. Lots of people just sitting on the sidelines. They're probably buying Microsoft today. But now that the stochastics have turned, I'm just going to watch this. I'm going to watch as long as this percent K line can stay above the percent D. I'm going to hold on to my call contracts in my Fidelity account. If you guys watched my video Friday and Monday, you know that I'm currently holding 12 call contracts on SPY. I think I'm currently up six or seven thousand dollars, but if I can ride this back up and we can have, you know, three consecutive green days, I could potentially make like fifteen, sixteen thousand dollars on those call contracts. So I'm watching these stochastics. I highly recommend you use them as well. I made a video dedicated to explaining what these are, so check that out. But let's get to Texas Instruments, and this is my big winner of these three guys. Uh, they absolutely crushed the quarter. They uh, put out their earnings report yesterday, and they grew revenue year over year by 18.4%. A boring company that makes analog chips, uh, mi microprocessors, grew by 18.4%. And they said it's driven by strong demand from industrial and automotive makers. This is, this is a very good quarter for Texas Instruments. However, I am concerned that the technicals won't support a breakout. So when we go into trading view, I'm going to start using this going forward because it's pretty good, guys. The level of resistance that Texas Instruments has been experiencing going back almost a year is at this $200 mark. So will Texas Instruments on a good quarter 
be able to break through this 200 barrier, and I don't think it will. There was a, a level of support that was recently broken off, uh, broken in this sell-off here at about $180. So let's go ahead and have red lines be level of resistance and uh, green lines be level of support. So you can see on earnings, the share price it, it briefly got below 180, but it's now back above it. I definitely can see this drifting back up to 190 or potentially 200, but I don't see it breaking out. And the reason why is the same reason why I want out of Texas Instruments. I think there are other more uh, amazing companies that have pulled back uh, by a greater amount that you can get a higher return on if you rotate out of companies like this into companies potentially like Adobe or Nike or, or, or Starbucks. So let's go on to the next company, and that would be Capital One. Uh, I'm watching these stochastics. Oh yeah, let's go back to Texas Instruments here. So when am I going to uh, sell to close my call contracts on Texas Instruments? I'm watching this percent %K line. As long as it stays above the percent %D and we've got a momentum in the buyer's direction, I will hold on to the contracts. But as soon as this turns and it looks like it's going to start, you know, drifting down again like it occasionally does. That's when I'm going to sell to close. Same thing with Capital One. They had a modest quarter after earnings. Uh, they're basically down 3%. They did beat on earnings estimates, but not by much. And I think the concern is, is that, uh, you know, compared to their competitors like American Express, they didn't do as well. Tangible book value per share also grew, which is good. Nothing bad, but also nothing phenomenal. So on earnings, uh, it is selling off. However, because the broader market is currently recovering, the stochastics uh, show that this should uptrend. So I'm hoping on the technicals alone, this can get me back above my cost basis. You'll notice for these positions, uh, Capital One and Texas Instruments are the one that I'm most negative on currently. So hopefully I can get back above break even uh, before I can get out of these two positions and then rotate into something else. The final company that uh, gave earnings was General Dynamics. It is up 1.34% uh, after reporting. And with General Dynamics, uh, they, 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 they beat on earnings. They beat by two cents, that's pretty good. However, they missed on revenue projections. Their revenue actually declined 1.8% year over year. They missed by $400 million. So kind of a mixed quarter. We'll see what that means. However, similar to the other two stocks, percent %K over percent %D, stochastics are turning. So we looked at uh, what, what's the current level of support, current level of resistance for Texas Instruments. Looking at Capital One, we can see that there probably is a line of resistance way up here at uh, 175. Let's make this line red. And there was, prior, uh, a very strong level of support here at 150. However, 150 probably is now a new line of resistance. So currently the share price is at 147. It's below it. If it can just get back above it, then this could be another line of support. There is downside risk where Capital One's current share price is. You'll notice there was a, a gap up here last April. Gaps like to fill, and it, it tried to fill it twice, uh, and buyers thankfully stepped in. I still think according to its book value compared to the other uh, credit card companies like J.P. Morgan Chase and American Express, Capital One, Definitely trades at a discount, but as far as uh, brand loyalty, brand recognition, not as strong as those companies. So hopefully momentum uh, this week can get this back above my cost basis and I can rotate out. So for the chart for General Dynamics, you could argue potentially that this is uh, currently channeling in an uptrend. With uptrend lines, these are the least reliable in my opinion. So we'll, we'll add them, but we'll just make them we'll just make them black. And you can see that kind of it's been in this channel going up pretty nicely, uh, bouncing up and down. 
Currently, good news is it is on the lower ends, so hopefully it does go up. Prior to this week or last week, you could see that there was a line of resistance here at 210. 210 uh, looked like uh, when, when General Dynamics got above it two or three weeks ago, it looked like we had broken through to all-time new highs and it was going to go higher. Currently, General Dynamics is at 208, so this is an important technical barrier. It has to get back above 210 for us to make uh, brand new highs. Currently, we'll just make this red. Uh, once again, red lines, level of resistance, green lines, level of support. <sighs> Could it potentially trend down? Like, where is the closest level of support, you could argue? And maybe going back to May of last year at $200, this is where buyers would step in for General Dynamics. Once again, great company, growing its dividend, doing stock buybacks. Its revenue is pretty secure, given that most of it is government contracts. Hopefully, yeah, it can get back above 210. We can get to all-time highs, and I can unload these contracts, rotate into something else. Okay, guys, thanks for watching this update video. Later this week, I've got earnings reports on Apple and HCA. Ideally, if Apple is good, this will help Berkshire and in general help the entire market since the entire market is so overweight on these mega caps like Microsoft and Apple. Still going to be an eventful couple days in the market, but I'm loving seeing the green. Hopefully your portfolios are recovering nicely as well. If you guys like this video, give me a thumbs up. Really helps out the channel. Any comments or questions, let me know down below. Till the next video, take care.